Well, folks, Antonio T. Smith Jr. is doing it again. He's done it again. Yes, he has. Giving away so much knowledge just to help you succeed. Walk out of the middle class. Become a multimillionaire. He is giving away his book just for you. The name of that book? The Richest Man in the Trash Can. You want to make sure you get this book. Here's why. If you are someone who is tired, frustrated, irritated of the day-to-day schedule of waking up, going to work, going back home, going to sleep just to do it all over again, not being able to spend time with your family, you just got married, you just had kids, or you take care of your parents and you're not there to do it, this is the book for you. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, this book is free 99. Yes, you heard me. Free 99. Okay? <laughs> All you for free. Yes. Free 99. All you have to do is just pay shipping and handling. That's it. $9.95 just to get your free book. This book is a life changer. I'm trying to tell you guys everything in this book is what Antonio taught myself in grace that enabled us to retire. Yes, we are retired and we haven't even hit our 40s yet. Woo! I'm just saying. I got a few months to go. Don't worry about it. Shh. Don't nobody need to know that, girl. (laughs) You don't look it. That's it. Go get it. Go get it and walk yourself out of the middle class into the life you deserve. Walk yourself into abundance. Abundance is freedom and this book is your journey out. You can plant better. You can dominate. To do. We're going to be, we're inspired uh-huh, to bring this to you. And what we want to do is give you a step-by-step guide on how to purchase property in 90 days or less. Yes. Yeah, all right. Well, Alicia's like, okay, got my hand up. I'm listening, Alicia. Go ahead. Give it to me. Before we get started, and if it's not about real estate, I just want to say nice, all right. and call. thank you for your encouragement last week. Um, I took Antonio's advice and I started doing my fun fact and I did it yep. yesterday. And uh, through Facebook suggestion, it said boost your post, boost your post. I'm like, yeah, right. You've been denying my ad. You're not going to boost my post. But I, I went forward and I did it anyway. And they accepted my um my post. Of my fun Look fact. at that. Um, and the Look fun fact that. actually was uh, my motto for my company, which is We Care. And I did three minutes on what we care about. I don't know if that's why they posted it or what, but I just want to tell everyone, thank you for encouraging me to get in front of the camera because I do not like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. But I did it. And uh, it's uh, helping my business to grow in some way, form or fashion. I don't know. But uh, I got my first approved post. So thank you for the encouragement. And thank you, Antonio, for the idea. And uh, I'm going to work this thing out. I appreciate it. You're very, very welcome. And she yeah, she texted me yesterday, I believe. It was like, hey, I did it. I did it. And once again, I gave her a prompt response. I did. Coach Spencer was texting me, too. So I'm glad for that as well. But Dale gives you clap emojis because he understands how to get his butt on camera too now. Gosh darn it. He, that boy was like, nope. I know success is over there, but I'm going to find a way to do it my own way, off camera. <laughs> so he's getting it. He even moved. I watched this Sunday, y'all. He moved just a little bit. He moved. He put it in the chat for I can finish it. I watched. I watched. I, I look. I, I lurked too. I didn't even like it. I didn't even like the status. I watched. I said, let me see if he do. And when it came to office, let me see if he do it. So yeah, yeah. He will. He moved it back though. He, it, it was. It was. It, but you know what? Let me not do that. I'm very inspired. Okay, you inspire me with your moving. So good job there, which is a big deal. Very big deal. Proud of y'all. Very, I just actually said it, right? But good, good deal. <laughs> good deal, y'all. Very, very good deal. Now, we want to give you a step-by-step guide to real estate, to buying your first property. And, or it doesn't have to be your first property. You, but you more than 
likely don't buy properties every 90 days. Now I'm going to teach you how, to, well, we're going to go at it in a lot of different ways. I want, and it's, it is, how many things did I send you, Maurice? Because it's a lot. It's about so maybe we're gonna 20, be, 20 or so. All right. All right. So mm -hmm. this is like 20 weeks. We're going to spend the next 20 weeks step by step of how and to get your, your property. And Adonia is getting ready to go buy billions of dollars of houses. She's out in some other state right now looking for real estate. She ain't slick. I know she's looking at, yeah. ain't she looking at real estate, Adonia? Don't lie to me. I know you is. <laughs> I know you is. I ain't telling. I ain't telling. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look, she acting like her daddy. Everything in real estate. Nah. Yeah, yeah. She watched something on the, on the news. Oh, I, I might need to go. They having a disaster over there. I bet you houses is cheap right now. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Good stuff. Anywho, so today we're going to talk. I forget what it was. Oh, selling the property. Start. Yeah, selling the property in ninety days. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna give you everything we possibly can about that, and then we're gonna go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper each week. But we won't hold back. I'll start it off to throw some alley oops real quick, yeah. briefly, and then we'll go we'll go back and forth. It first off, you need to be in a ninety day mindset. This is now. What do I mean by selling a house in ninety days? I mean from from offer to close you understand then like getting offer and then close or if you're flipping offer close rehab sale do you understand what i'm saying and, and I, we can talk both buy and hold and fix and flip but mainly this should be a strategy for fixing and flipping Mainly. Well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because I'm more of a buy whole person. But nevertheless, from the moment Alicia say, I like that, all the way to Alicia gives it to Phil and Susan at a $45,000 profit, 90 days. Before I go deeper in that, Maurice, what would you think it's important to do this in 90 days and not 320? 78. Well, one reason is because this market is fluid and it's ever changing and a lot can happen in, in 90 days and for your money purposes, for one time value versus money, you know, the longer your money sit out there, the more you lose. So mm -hmm. you turn, yeah, to turn over your money is quicker, you know, as much as, as quick as possible, you know, um, it's not like it's sitting in the bank and the purpose you reason that you do real estate like that is because you may earn, let's say they give you 1% of your money sitting in the bank. If you take it and put it in real estate with a, a proven formula and a good formula, that's going to, a, a, a sound formula where you're not going to lose, that can take the place of that. So if that's the case, then it's the value of your money over a 90 day period versus it being held up for 390 days. You know, so that's one of the things. So the value of your money over time. Yeah, no doubt. You, you, you got any more you can think of? You can give us. In fact, let me, let me, let me jump in and I'll let you give. Yeah. Why would you want to top your money for 378 days, 390 days? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Your money is stuck. Yep. What happens if you get sick? The economy mm -hmm. takes a downturn. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, listen, y'all, do not freeze your money in stuck places. Yeah. Money means nothing if it's potential. That's right. <laughs> if money is potential money, that ain't money. That's right. You, no, no. It's a yes. it's a Do you want a potential man? <laughs> you know, girl, he could potentially be faithful. Okay. Okay. That don't make no sense no more, huh? All right, then. You don't, want, you don't want your wife to be potentially faithful, so you don't need your money <laughs> to be potentially to make me money. Don't lock your money in potential at all. It's the last thing you want to do. You want to put your money in a vehicle and then get that money out that vehicle in 90 days. This is the formula we're going to put you on. So Now, I just introduced a new concept. Vehicle, we'll talk about that here in a second. 
But did you have anything you want to add more to tying up your money or whatever you want to say from a broker perspective or just your personal experience? Well, look, real estate is, is, is not really liquid, you know? So when you put it in there, you have to, it ain't, it's like, meaning you can't go get it that quick. You can't just go to an ATM or go right. to a bank teller and say, yep. I don't want my money back. I need, I need to put it over here. So you have to, you know, you, so that system that you, that you employ or the system that you put together, we, we put together for 90 days had to be sure proof. So it's not as liquid, you know, you can't get it as fast, out as fast. So, so it, it you know, it becomes a polished, almost like how we're doing the classes, you know, you get better at it, you, you fumbling over the first, you know, first, it becomes a, you become polished at, at the formula that you put in place. You know, it gets better and better. You know, that ain't something you want to fumble with. That's why you, you know, in the first place of losing in the beginning, that's why you get the right people and employ the right people. Make sure that the individual that you put in place that's going to be advising you is someone that has done it before, that they have investment properties or have experience in that part of it. So, you know, um, almost like, you know, like I'm not going to go to Dunkin' Donuts and get oil change. I'm not going to go to a, you know, I'm going to get, get the right person that has experience with with that, you know, not just because he's a real estate professional, you know, or just because he has an agent, he's an agent. And that's the other thing too. I think, you know, um, all agents are not created equal so that, you know, make sure that, you know, you take charge of that. Take you, you, it's, it's, you take charge of, of the concept and the whole idea of it. Because a lot of times when you go into things that you're really not sure of and really don't know about, you tend to kind of sometimes, not everyone, but tend to kind of be shy away from, taking ownership in a way and maybe giving, you know, more power to the other person than they should have. Always remain in charge and always remain in control of what you're supposed to remain in control of. What's yours, especially when it's your money. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I like how, as we get into some of the other, you know, training your realtor, but that's a whole nother class. We're going to get into another portion, portion of it is, you know, um, taking charge of it. It's your money, you know, and, and that's how you become, you, you know, you put your, your spin on it, for lack of a better word. You know, you put your flavor into it. Okay, I don't know this portion of it, but I do know it's my money. I know what I want to see the outcome of. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging you and we're engaging to a partnership for this process. And I need, need to get from that individual, you know, one that he knows it, that he's done one before. And those are, those are the questions that need to be asked. Have you done any flips before? Have you done, do you own any real estate before? You know, I mean, have you ever, matter of fact, have you ever even been through the process of it? Because that's a big thing. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes the person hasn't even been through the, the transaction. Going through a sale transaction uh, makes the, can make the difference, you know, make a difference in the individual. So that's important that the person that's on the other side that's help holding your hand through it. And I liken it to this is that the agent helps the buyer from one end of the transaction to the other end and the broker helps the bro the age yeah the broker helps the agent he coaches and guides the agent to the same thing so you know going into it with that con con mindset concept is that 90 days i think i think yeah. I answered. hopefully that was it no that was no it. you answered the you know you did fantastic and you made me say something we'll talk about training your realtor in one of these, I think it's on the yeah, second or one third one. Yeah. yeah, it's one of them. We'll talk about that for sure because you're going to have to do that. But yeah. since he brought up realtors, I do want to let you know, just because a real estate agent is a real estate agent doesn't mean they know how to sell real estate. True. And I'm so Facts. sorry to say that. Right? Facts. I'm, Facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry to say that. <laughs> That they just came out of the kitchen and looked at me like, why would you say that? I'm sorry, Yana. It's true. the truth, though. It's the truth. It's the truth. Coach, you want to say something? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Well, look, you got your mic working now. Right? Whatever you do doing now, it works just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Now, you, y'all should know. I, I, am I telling you not to work with a beginning realtor? No, that's not what I'm saying. Just because everyone has to start somewhere. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I'm not telling you don't work with people. I am telling you school teaches you the concept of real estate. True. Then you got to go out there and actually sell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Find the right deal and all sorts of stuff. 
And of course, the always the best deals are always the ones off the off the market from mm-hmm. a highly motivated seller. But that's we'll talk about that too later mm-hmm. on. But just know that your realtor may not be experienced, and that's okay. So I want to tell you two things about that. Find you an experienced real estate agent. Go do that. Or find you an inexperienced. I personally like inexperienced real estate (laughs) agents. I do. I do. I didn't know that until. Now, of course, I want you to know something. But guess what? I'm training my real estate agent. You understand? So I'm not worried about your inexperience. What I'm, what I'm more, what I'm more motivated is, I get to mold you after my liking to do my type of deals, yep. and that is more profitable to me because I know the skill sets I'm teaching you, you get to keep, and you get to go get more people like me, and that's valuable to you. Plus, you're going to get your commissions and stuff. And I also know that that works out you know it, it just works out that way because i need to train my real estate. now i can't really do that that much no more maurice because i'm doing commercial now with, with you know the multi-units and that really doesn't like everything i just said doesn't really apply with multi because mm-hmm. you gotta in fact won't you comment on that and then explain why a beginning realtor can't even do Anything past four houses, I believe. At least in Texas, I believe. It's four units, four four doors. And at least it's in Texas, four. I believe. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. That's nationwide. Good stuff. That's national. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so um, as a real estate, residential and commercial and residential is two totally different animals, two different worlds, too, for sure. Um, commercial is more cutthroat. Bigger dollars is in it. Um, so and for nat- national purposes, it, real estate, one to four units, is the maximum amount that a res a, re, a real estate agent can sell anything beyond that and this is for new jersey licensees purposes um and pennsylvania anything beyond that um you have to have an attorney involved in it so what happens is it the transaction from the real estate professional side gets easier for you for the agent because technically all you're writing up is really what's called a letter of intent when you get to the commercial side of it um you're writing up a letter of intent and it's not necessarily a full-fledged contract but you write up the letter of intent and then technically you're handing the deal off the rest of the deal off to the attorney they draft the contract and then it goes into you know the attorneys start to talk and you know they do the stuff that they do and they get involved in the transaction and you know go from there um but as residential um agents we're um, you're, you're able to um, sell property from um, one single family up to four family and vacant lots. That's what a residential agent, the license, is. that's to the extent of what the license allows for a residential agent. And that's for the state of, I know I'm going to venture to say that that's on a national, um, nationwide, national, um, but I do know for certain, I'm going to say for certain for New Jersey and Pennsylvania, that's it. And, you know, Antonio just said for, for Texas as well. So, um, yeah. Four units. yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've never seen it anywhere else. But yeah. I've never seen it anywhere else, but I just know Texas for sure. And I feel comfortable saying that. Keep going. No, that's it. And what was it? Gonna say? Oh, the other part of what comes in into it is there's, um, um, environmental tests, environmental things that go along with commercial real estate. Um, there's other other components that you know it's a total different animal as it, as it relates to real estate. Commercial real estate has its own language, you know. They, you know, it's, it has its own language. So once you get licensed, so what you said earlier about school teaches you the concept, it's the theory of the test, and what you learn in real estate school is just enough to get you to pass the exam, to get the license, and a piece of paper. Everything else is um you're gonna learn when you get in it and you get in the trenches of it and you get to your office and you start doing the deals you start searching the deals out you start you know whether you're going to the tax to the um, um to your local tax assessor's office or tax wherever you're going to find your deals that's where you really find out your um and with technology you come we your the consumer will come more equipped and sometimes it's better prepared than the real estate professional is you know a lot of times 
you know, an informed consumer comes, it's not, it's not the way it was. You know, it used to be that you had to come to the agent to get to access the properties. Not no more. Not when, where you have, you know, these different third parties. Zillow. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, all, yeah, Netflix, yeah. all of Realtor.com, yeah. you know, and that's even a whole nother thing in itself. You know why that, you know, but, um, so you have a lot of access to information. You know, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The internet changed the game for for real estate. <laughs> it really did. Mm, yeah, sure. Access to property. yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, so, so that's that on the real estate side. Now, back to the, the the well, still on, but back to the ninety days. Okay, thanks. There is what you would call. Y'all should write this down because most people don't know about it. Hyper market, super hyper markets hyper market super hyper markets do you suggest someone start with residential properties even though commercial is the real desire start 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 <laughs> wherever you're comfortable at all start, right he said start wherever you're comfortable at start you wherever you're comfortable start at. That's commercial good advice. because it's a learn that's you're gonna learn either way you have to learn Commercial and, and you're to learn <laughs> the great to the background. Talk about that HOS, that HOS. <laughs> I know, yeah, <laughs> talk yeah. about me. No, <laughs> yeah. no, you're right though. Start where you come. No, no, that is that that is a hundred percent solid advice. My advice is not in contradictory to that. It's not. It's just <laughs> I am an aggressive hundred. <laughs> like my my financial goal. <laughs> drives my decision making. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a hundred percent solid advice. That advice will make you rich. At the end of the day, get started. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Right. For I, sure. I, I want to so much how to receive all that. I do not want to um, there's no nothing I'm gonna say next is gonna be contradictory. It's not. I just want you to know that he is absolutely right. That being said Monitor your financial goal. What's your financial goal? Well, what's your financial goal? If your financial goal is in alignment with real estate agents, become an agent and then get your broker. If, you're, if your uh, financial goal is like threes, then become an agent, then become a broker in three states. You get it? Maurice's goals are not in alignment with real estate agents. If they were, He'd be a real estate agent. He, he get what I'm saying? If if he thought small like a real estate agent, and I don't mean that in a disrespect. I'm just like there is. If he has to think higher, that's why he's in a higher position. Is, is this fair? or Do I sound this insensitive? Am I am I sounding? I'm not trying to sound insensitive. Uh, you know, just the lion in me is, is always insensitive. But you know, it's just he has higher financial goals. Therefore he thinks differently from a real estate agent. Me, I want to be a hundred billionaire. So I'm going to tell you, don't you buy nothing <laughs> but luxury apartment complexes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to tell you. That's already cash flowing. You get it? That's what I'm going to tell you. Now, did I start that way? No. I started with single family homes because I didn't have hundred billion dollar aspirations in 2008. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had get out the hood aspirations <laughs> <laughs> in 2008. <laughs> you know, both, well, in this case, we're saying the same thing. But anybody you go listen to, they're right. I, I can't stress this enough, y'all. All these mentors and gurus out there, they're right. Now, if they're working in the field, follow them. If they're just, if they make their money through education, don't follow them. Just don't. I just wouldn't follow them. I would mm -hmm. never follow someone that makes their money off education and not real estate. Everything I do gets funneled back into real estate. That's the real business. It's the real business. It is not this or whatever, whatever they award me for. That is not what I do. I can't stress this enough. I funnel money back to real estate. It's the only thing that gives you freedom. Well, it's not the only thing, but let me just let me just say that real quick. Starting a business will not give you freedom. That's not true. It is a fallacy. 
starting a business is the beginning of freedom. If you become a business owner, now you got to look at Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant for this. A business owner is on the right side of the quadrant. Starting a business then allows you to be an investor if you become a business owner. True freedom lies in having income producing assets yes, sir. that give you consistent cash flow. I heard someone, I, I didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing and because it, it wasn't my time to talk, but I heard someone say, this is up and down. It doesn't have to be. Entrepreneurship doesn't have to be up and down. Small business doesn't have to be up and down. Real estate doesn't have to be up and down. Y'all, listen to me. Lean in and listen to me. They lied to us. They never taught us how to have predictable revenue. That's what I'm attempting to do. I'm trying to show you predictable revenue. It doesn't have to be up and down. Right. If I would have started, and I got this all together now. I just built the damn thing backwards. <laughs> I wish I would. <laughs> if I had a chance to do it again, I would have went with predictable revenue first, Alicia. They taught me go get money. They didn't teach me the power of monthly subscriptions. Mm. Y'all know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They didn't teach me now, what's best, one door or 500 doors? Sure. 500 doors. You get it? What's best, making $10,000 off one product? Coaching. This is this is why I don't coach. It's the wrong vehicle for my financial goals. Damn. May I start this company building having ten thousand dollars? Hey, my coaching package get two thousand dollars, five thousand, whatever. But then that money would be gone investing in something. What's better, one person paying you five thousand dollars? or 5,000 people paying you $1 a month. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying, Alicia? This is real talk. I wish I would have started that way. I didn't, God dog it, but I'm fixing that. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm fixing that. Anyway, your 90 days. I would personally tell all of you to start off. In fact, I'm not the only person that would tell you this. I'm pretty sure Grant Cardone would say something similar because we got the same similar mindset, but we're both trying to, and this guy's got 1.8 or $1.08 billion of real estate under management, his own real estate, okay? So I know he's gonna say something similar to this if he hasn't already. I tell you, get $250,000 as fast as possible. Hook up with Maurice. Hey, Maurice, can I work with you for free, man? I just want, so what's your goal? I want $250,000, I need you to figure me how to get that. Yep, got it. That's why, that's why I'm Maurice, that's why I got him close to me because I'm gonna do that for Maurice. Help me somebody. Mm -hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? See, he's out there being prominent, and I'm not out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, I want to be out there, but I can't be out there. But he out there. So come here. Let me make you a lot of money. So when I ask you for something, I qualify for it. All right. <laughs> Boy, I just there said something. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I would tell you all, I'm going to get $250,000, and then take that $250,000, and then put it down, 25% down on a million dollar already cash flowing apartment. That's what I would tell you. That's what I would tell you. The goal is, well, dang, Antonio, I ain't got the $250,000. Then that's where you do exactly what Maurice said. Okay. You start where you're starting. And then make, and have him help you with a plan <laughs> to flip all that to $250,000 cash flow. Or maybe you can leverage $250,000 of your net worth if you got enough equity, and then use that as the collateral for the same apartment complex. Get it, Maurice? You want to answer that? Because that was that was fantastic. No, that was that was really powerful. No, I, not much to add to it. Yeah. So leverage, leverage. You can use it to leverage. Um, you can use that to leverage properties and find use two hundred and fifty to leverage and and um, flip flip properties because if you find the right deal. Um, when you leverage it, and if you can get it sold, you know, if you have to start that way, you know, starting with, with, with start on that level, you know, finding some properties that you can flip to get to the bigger goal, you know, so 
if you know 250,000 is a definitely and depends on what, what what market you're in too because 250 in, in California ain't gonna be much you know 250 maybe in New York ain't gonna well, be that's much. a good point that <laughs> was a really good point I feel, you can tell I'm talking Texas talk yeah. boy <laughs> you showed up I know you listen to me like, boy, that ain't doing nothing for me over here. I've been right in the Bay Area. That ain't nothing but some bread, a loaf of bread, 250,000. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So definitely, again, depends on which state you're in, you can leverage that and you can get a lot. You know, 250 is a, you know, a big space and, you know, depends on the state you're in. So it really starts with your doing your due diligence where you are, you know, and um, coming up with a 90 day plan. And that 90 day plan is so key that that that's the guiding point of, because in the foundation, if that's established early on and put together right now in the foundation, the 90 day plan, that will make everything so much easier. You know, that 90 days is the goal to get this property in, get it in it and get it going and get it out. And don't deviate from that. You know, at least it's the goal. You might go 91 days, 92 days, or 89 days. But at the point, you know, that, 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 that's, that's important component to have that 90 days because you yep. got a guide. You know, it's almost like a business plan. You know? Which brings us back to supermarkets, super, supermarkets and hyper supermarkets. Yeah, but hypermarkets, there you go. And super hypermarkets, which brings us right back to that full circle. As only said, very true. A hypermarket is a market in which houses are moving at 90 within 90 days or less everybody got it a hypermarket is when houses are moving in 90 days or less again this isn't this is not new information you've got what's that guy name i ain't want to uh, Anyway, there are people, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we want to be mentioned though. We want to be mentioned. But there are people that, that that teach this. Now Maurice is getting ready to tell you how to find this out. <laughs> 90 days is a hypermarket. A super hypermarket is houses that are moving in an area in 60 days or less. See, now I want y'all to process this information. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this to you. And then I'm going to throw Marisa alley because he has access to the MLS and all his agents do. See, I can't go get this information for you. Maurice can. I don't, I don't think I pressed that point hard enough. I'm telling you 60 days or less, 90 days or less. But don't ask me because I'm going to go ask my agent because my agent has access to the MLS to put in a search query to get this that Maurice would break down for you eloquently. I'm just telling you, don't go out there and say, hey, Antonio said do 90 days left, six days left. No, go do that. But don't go pick a house in a market that houses are not moving and expect yeah. to move that house in 90 days or less. You have to go to an area in which that's happening. Which leads me to the last temporary point I'm making here. This is a non-emotional game. Oh, yeah, true. That yes, is. sir. Oh, that house is pretty. Don't get it then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm saying something. Yeah. I'm saying, that's mm -hmm. a nice, don't get it. If it looks nice, don't get it. It is overpriced. Yep. <laughs> you ain't making no money. If you're in single family houses and you're trying to buy and hold or what, well, let's stick with fix and flip. If you're attempting to fix and flip, you better get a distressed property. True. Maurice, you know what? You got a lot to put this down in chat for me really quick. He got a lot to explain because I'm just throwing alley oops everywhere. He got five basketballs, distressed <laughs> properties. <laughs> like hard gold trying to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put <laughs> distressed no. properties, they put using your real estate agent to search for your query, you know, and run comps because he's going to bring that. There's no way because you got to, anyway, he, he knows. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then put 
put zip code search because that's what's going to happen for sure. But, but he knows, though. He's going to say it on his own. He's going to say it on his own. And then just, do you put distressed properties? Mm-hmm. Okay, you put the search file. Okay, cool. All right, good, good. If it's in the chat, then you can go. You can look at the chat and, and, and remember what you're talking about. I want you to know. Oh, also, don't go out there and try to do a 90 day or less deal where houses are not moving in 90 days or less. Mm-hmm. Yes, oh, okay. it's the most. It, you, you you fail if you don't. You fail, and most people don't know this. Most of you listening, uh, well, statistically, the statistics would tell me most of you wouldn't know this because it's not what's it's, it's not what's taught. And it makes you, oh man, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna find a house, I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna find somebody and move it in nine days. No, that's not how it works. Maurice, from a take it away because you got so much to say that you're going to be talking for quite some time by like using the, oh, put, put, put comp, no, that's say comp? Mm-hmm. All right, because he's, all right, go ahead, brother. It's too all much. Right. And this all is right, coming so, back up later, too, in different weeks. Go ahead, though. No, yeah, you want it, man. So one thing I want to just say earlier, you said something earlier about um, ways to find those properties. Join investment groups because they're out there. Um, what do you call those groups? Um, Meet up. I don't even know what you meet call. Up, yeah, meet meetups. Meetups. Meet meetups. Yeah. So meet up. So plenty of email lists that you can join too to get emails. Yep. Absolutely. Because those are where it's going to be your, especially now in the market. We are in a market where there's no inventory. Like there's not, there's no inventory. You can't find. So you got to find alternative ways. It just makes you creative. So now there's no real inventory where where back prior to 2008 inventory was like ready. It was out there. You could just you know find it. It was a lot easier accessible. However, that means that there's, there's this shadow inventory that's being talked about in the real estate industry. Yeah, you hear that a lot. There's a, they say, oh, the shadow inventory should be coming out soon. Um, anytime you go to any trainings or any classes, I'm going to classes, they're always talking about, um, well, we're going to teach you about that. Be prepared for the shadow inventory they're about to be released. You know, all the inventory. Because, because why? Because the numbers of loss that we see from 2008, when the market did what it did, we don't see the numbers. It don't match the number of properties that's on the market now. So there is really a real shallow inventory. The question is where it is, right? And what happens is you're going to find that, and that's where those investment groups come in at, because you'll find that um, some of those groups, they'll sell those properties off in bulk. I had a property that I was, I was working with in, um, in my prop preservation, and I was doing the uh, property preservation, and it had it listed and everything. So what happened was, um, they ended up selling the property in a bulk. So my point is that there's other alternative sources to find those properties. One of them will be definitely meetups, joint investment groups, any groups that are in your area that will find me because there's a group of individuals out there that know, look, you don't have access to the properties um, that, that's coming to the market or prior to coming to the market. And a lot of times, by the time we get to the MLS, it's already been through that phase. So find your investment groups and join those meetup groups and all those individuals that are doing it. Even if you doing it, haven't done it for the first time, haven't done it, join that group and just sit back and listen and go to them. You'll find them at real estate offices. They'll have most, all, all, an office will hold the group there, especially if I'm, I'm trying to get property management. Why wouldn't I open up my office to a group of people that's buying real estate? Come use my space and hold your meeting there anytime you want. Because there's a group of landlords there, investors there, people that want it. So there's somebody that's going to be there that really complements your business. So maybe go to that real estate office where the uh, meet up, where the, where, the, where the investment groups are. The question on would I live buy, buy don't if the property looks good don't buy it. What and would I live? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do me a favor before you, before you go there. Can you yes, break sir. down because you 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 set yourself up for for greatness? How I can say hey real estate agent, can you use the MLS? And I'm looking for three bedroom, two bath, and can you find for me where the houses are moving at in 60 days or less or 90 days or less, and then here are some zip codes or whatever like that. Can you break down the, the how you guys go into your MLS and do the little query search that I do? <clears throat> so 
Um, and it's almost accessible to the public too, if you know how. So what it does, what we do is you go in the MLS, you come to me and say, look, I'm looking for a three bedroom, two bath, um, 1500 square feet minimum, you know, newer home that is, um, I don't want something too dated, you know, but, um, those are really the four components that we look for. That's right. Four, That's five, right. I forgot two. about the date too. Yep. 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 Yeah. Not after X date. Yep. And one of the reasons is because of the lead paint, lead-based paint. So any properties built after 1978, that's another step in the sale, you know, another step in the process. So a lot of times people want stuff, you know, they'll just say, make sure it's after 1980 or not after 1985, you know, 1985. So what we do is we put in there, you tell me, so if you brought me your property, the first step I do is I pull a tax record. First to make sure that you own it. <laughs> pull the tax records and I go on private <laughs> information. <laughs> Surprise, man. So it's Stuff that come up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, That's fact facts, though. Got to make sure you all there. That's facts. <laughs> uh, uh, and um, then, because the, then the tax record is going to give you um, factual data. You know, it's going to give you the actual square footage, the actual year it was built. It depends on where you're at. You know, the more factual, the, act, the more data you get. New Jersey um, tax records is horrible, man. You know, it's like bare minimum. You don't get much of nothing, you know, with the tax records. But you almost kind of got to go there, go down there and get that. Um, Pennsylvania kind of give you, they give you the, they give you down to the bedroom square footage and everything. Now, part of that is, is because the way they raise your taxes is based on what you do in the property. So when you pull a permit, that raises your taxes. That's another conversation, but I just wanted to just throw that out there, right? But we go on the system. You say, all right, I want to put my house on the market and see what I, now you're an investor. Now you at the 90 day period, you at the point where you, you, you look, you up offload this property. You don't got the property. You did the repairs and now you're ready to cash in and sell it. So you did, let's say you did steps A through G, which has got the property, um, got it at the right amount of money. You, you purchased it, right? You in a position, you, you met your budget, for repairs and you did it, you below budget. Okay, so you're gonna make a little more than what you, you know, what you thought. And now you're at the point, and I'm going to a real estate professional and I'm gonna say, all right, now this is what I need for you to tell me the value of my property. How much is my house worth? And so we're going to the property, we put the we put your property in, the subject property. Your property has three bedrooms, two baths, it's 1,200 square feet, it's built in 1980, 1990. And um, the style of home. So it's a, cake, it's a colonial home, three bedrooms, two baths, built in 1990, and it has 1,500 square feet. So what we do is we put in, 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 this, in our search query, I'm going to put in three to four bedrooms, one to three baths, uh, 1,000 to 1,600 square feet, built in, all colonials though, built in between 1985 and 1995. 90% of the time, your property is going to come back and it's going to tell you every colonial that's sold within the last three months. And you put in a three month period search, not six month search. And uh, um, you put in your three month search and it, it pulls back your, um, the actual property that your property, which is um, your property will come up in that search. And that's what um, that's how we come up with it. And, and what the important part is what's sold, because people will put it on the market, put the properties on the market for anything. And what you're looking for is what's sold and when. So facts, and yeah, three of them, sold. and three, three of them too. Yes, 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 yes. Basically, so you you might want to. Well, actually, you you had so much to cover. Keep going, keep keep going with through your list. because we because we'll, cause we're gonna come back to that anyway. How to do cuffs and stuff anyway. So okay. We can't do it this. So, so just a couple of things is worst house on the block. You want to buy the worst house on the best block. Don't go for properties that you know that look good, don't go for property. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you, most of the time, it's your first one gonna be emotional for you. I know, you, you, I know it's gonna, you're gonna feel some type of way about your first one. When they tear that doorknob off that you just bought and it's the carpet don't look the same if you, if you put a tenant in there, you know, I mean, that's if you hold it, you know, but you know, you're gonna be emotional. There's gonna be some emotions to that first one that you buy. So the process of working through it really works that emotion out of it. So buying a property and don't look at it as a lot of times you go into, I wouldn't live on this block, so I can't, I wouldn't buy that, buy this property. 
And you want to let the data dictate whether or not you're going to buy that property in that area or not, because if it says that that place is renting, it's a high turnover rate or place that place can be rented in that area because you have to think for the, the person buying the property from you, you know, because, you know, it might be, you might, or you may be a homeowner. Somebody else may be willing to buy in that area. So I just wanted to say, buy the worst house on the, the worst house on the best block distressed properties and just the comps are the most valuable in this whole process and comps is the the comparables of the property comparing that property to um um to your to your property you know the comparable of it the compare the, the, the comps you know you comparing apples to apples you comparing a cape cod to a cape cod you can't compare you know just because it's on the same block that doesn't matter it has to be a um colonial with three bedrooms or close to it or a four bedrooms or the like for like. And sometimes it may, there's adjustments that could be made, you know? So there's adjustments that, so if you find one that you can't find, you know, a four bedroom, you happen to find a three bedroom, you deduct $7,000 for a bedroom, you know? And there's numbers, you may deduct. You just can't find the exact house. So there's deductions and there's ways, and that's what the real estate agent would do for you. And that's where he come in handy to help you to, you know, come up with your number and you you know you'll get um, um skilled at that also the more you do it so um you know and taking and taking but the most important is finding out the area and making sure that the area homes are moving in that area like you said antonio but i think i covered it yeah, each point. No, I, yeah 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 definitely definitely what else for 90 days this is um this is all intro well yeah i guess it really is intro stuff I don't think I got nothing else on this one because okay. I know what the script is because we're coming back to everything. What are we talking about next? Next is get a real to the pool REOs for me. <laughs> so I've tried not to because we're going to do the whole process, right, Adelia? We're going to do that next next week and I don't want to do it this week and be like, all right, well, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, this is you need to know all of this. What else is there? Anything else? Well, don't you? You're a professional. <laughs> you 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 got that professional, and and you about to buy real big too. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> Them curls gonna get extra curly. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You say nothing change with the price of my shoes, honey. That's it. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. Uh, you, you you keep that saying. That was hot. I just made it up the top of my head, but that was hot though. <laughs> Anything? Can you think of something, Adonia? That let's see, nothing that we leaving out for this intro section. Ninety days. I really gave you everything I had for yeah for this without going into what we talking about next week. Without going into what we talking about next week. So you should all research. What a, a, well, a REO is well, research area, real too. estate, yeah, real yeah, estate research owned. area, REO. real estate own, yeah. And then, you know, what zip codes, and uh, you should really target. Well, not really. Well, it, it, you can, there's a zip code is a great strategy. You can, disasters are fantastic for real estate. Well, for the way we're teaching you real estate. Disasters are fantastic. Yep. When Hurricane Harvey came through and flooded everything, that was bad. Two sets of carbon-based creatures benefited. Mosquitoes and real estate investors. <laughs> <laughs> it was abundant season for mosquitoes and real estate investors. I'm dead serious. And I'm not even sure if at the time there was two different types of creatures. They might have been one and the same. <laughs> they might have been one and the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Because you're not, because typically you, someone like me, and I'll teach you this, I'll make a all cash offer, but it'd be 65 cents on a dollar. So I gotta have a, I have to have the right real estate agent that's brave enough to make those kind of offers because those are low offers. Do you understand? And they're not disrespectful low. They are investor low. Ah, see, mm -hmm. this is where you can't get emotional. 
Mm-hmm. You can't you can't get emotional with this. They are investor low. You can't get emotional with this. And you gotta have to have the right agent that's not worried about their reputation and all that stuff because I'm an investor. I'm not buying from Mary Ann because you know how serious she is about this house. I don't care. It's an opportunity for me. It's 15 years of memories for you. Mm-hmm. You understand? For me, it is in a, it's just cash flow. It's cash flow. Okay. No way you done it. So anyway, we'll get to that. Anything you want to add, brother? Cause I'm done. No. Yeah. Just make, so in the areas of, of development. So next to disasters, you, you look at gentrification and that's a whole nother ah. conversation. And other areas where development is going on, you want to buy around those areas. Because a lot of times where the gentrification is going, a lot of times those areas are, they see, that stuff has been, been carved out. And that, mm-hmm. a lot of times that's been targeted and slated 10, 20 years ago, that this is going to yep. be happening. And it's already, so um, you definitely want to check your city hall, whatever area it is, and see what they got in the plan of development. What's happening in your city hall? to see what they got on the path of development and what areas. Mm-hmm. So if they saying, hey, I got this area slated, we look like we're gonna, we're gonna b- rebuild this block and make it this way and that way. So guess where your search should be, probably gonna be. Somewhere around within the three, four block radius of where they're gonna build that. Because <laughs> there's gonna be some properties there that haven't, they hadn't, they haven't sold. Some hold, some that, you know, so th- those are areas also where you can find good deals, especially to get started. You know, you may find some deals and, you know, there's some creative ways to get into it, but that's, that's a good way to use that 250 wisely, yep. you know, use that 250 yep. and go in and offer a cash off of cash is cheap. <clears throat> you can offer 65 cent on a dollar when I can close in a week. I close this for you in three yep. days. If it's the right numbers, after they went through my process, your process, you know, your 90 day process, and you'll set up a system to make sure that the value is there, you know, and then once the value is there, you know, that on the end game, you're good. So, okay, I can't offer no more than this. You know, you have, and part of your team is you're gonna need a contractor, you know, someone that's gonna do, you know, look at the property and assess it. And you'll get so good at it at a certain point, you'll be able to tell by looking at the property, how much you're gonna have to put into it, you know, versus, um, yeah, you look at it and you'll be able to see that from without even some sight unseen, you know, and you can look at the property and because you know the area so well. So you got to definitely the area, you should own that area where you're going by. You should know almost everything about that area that you're looking into. If it's an area that you want to invest in, you want to know everything, you want to know everything about who it is and be on a one first name basis probably with, you know, city hall, if it's via phone or, you know, information, because that's going to be what makes it make you win and knowing what's going on, especially if it's in the path of development. You know, if it's in a path of development, that's going to be the key thing, you know. So that's next best thing to a disaster area is an area that they're building up in. That's being built up in, you know. Um, yeah, that's it for that. You know, like definitely yeah. you can buy, yeah, buy, buy in the areas that's being built. That's it. Well, we talked the meat off the bones on this one. That works, ladies and gentlemen. It's ATS Real Estate. Maurice, if you're ever in, t- tell us what, what state you're brokering in. Um, New York. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and I got my test scheduled for Michigan. I'll be having a Michigan license and probably, I think I mentioned that soon. So yeah, I got to mm. go take the exam. I'll be in Michigan soon. Um, don't sleep on Ohio and don't sleep on Michigan, y'all. I'm telling you, take a look at those areas. Ohio and Michigan are areas because in Ohio, there's rents. Um, the property values are, you still can get properties at a good price. But the best part about Ohio is their rents are like you can still get good rents. So you can get a property, three or four multi unit properties in Ohio, any cash flows. Like you walk into those properties cash flow. So don't be afraid to look in other areas because you can always hire a property manager. You know, so you can always find the property manager and don't look at it like, well, what am I going to do? I'm way this way, I'm way over here. I own in Michigan. You know, I own some stuff in Michigan and, you know, buy. You can get stuff. I'm not saying that just to say it because I own, but I'm just saying that it's hours away, you know, and you can hire a property manager there to do the work, you know, to, to get stuff. And, um, you know, there's whole blocks in Michigan. <laughs> there's whole blocks. Like you can ride down a whole block and see 
fire here, abandoned. Uh, it's standing still, brick, solid brick. You can't really tell what's going on with it. You don't know what it looks like on the inside. You get inside and you might find that it's, it's a whole house still put together, you know, well, well. I mean, it's like just like that. You can walk in some of these homes and it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, but why is that important? I don't want to go to Michigan yet. The media tell you, yes, yeah, so, oh, Michigan, Detroit is, don't go to hard as the water. That's all exactly that. why you want to go. That's exactly why you want to go. You know, ain't no, that water wave was important back in the day. That, that river was as important back then as it is now. So that river that, and you know, so that there's, you know, very, so like doing the research and finding out, you know, about these cities, but Michigan and Ohio are very um, good places to, um, to, get in, to get into something and, and apply your same system, you know, making sure that the individual knows that area. And, you know, um, but those are 2.2 that I wanted to drop out there to you just to research and look at. You can still get into properties for $5,000 in Michigan. A whole house. Look at that. Five grand. You know, so 250 can go a long way. You can buy a block for 250 in Michigan. Whole block, whole block is yours. And then they'll give you the whole, the, um, the blocks next to it for $1,000. Not the block, but the lot. If there's a lot next to your house and you own the house, you get first bid. They almost want to give it to you. That's they just have, they have there's so many thousands of homes that's, that, that's owned there. And if you go there with the right system and the right plan, and you know, it's almost like it's open season. So this 90 day, day plan can put you in a position to do that anywhere in any city if put together. You know, if a system is put together, you can take that system with you and go anywhere and make it work, you know, and make it work for you in a way that, because you know, these cities are not into, into home to hold and property. They want someone like you and I to come in there and say, okay, what's your plan? Here's how I'm going to get these properties. Why? Because they want them to come back to the tax rolls. So don't you think if I go to the city and say, look, Give me this block of properties here. Give me six months, 10 months, 12 months. I'm going to return them back to you, and they're going to be back on your tax rolls. You're going to pay taxes. It's sitting there for them right now. It's sitting. They ain't making them no money. You know what I mean? So I, those are just, you know, ways to get into and get into it big, you know, in a big way. Now, I know a little, you know, small, you know, small, it starts with one, of course. But, you know, you can pool your resources like we do. We pool, pool our resources with what we know and come together. And the same thing can apply, you know, when, with investments and stuff like that. So I just wanted to throw that out there for those two states that I know for certain. No, that was good. That was good. That was absolutely good. Michelle G. and Chad said, come to Kansas City, Missouri. And if they scan you from a place, that's where exactly you should probably go. Definitely right. Now, the media is a for-profit place to – anyway, let me not do that during this call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how I get on my little woke moments. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Sure, appreciate you, Adonia. I thought you was out of town somewhere. I thought you was in Atlanta or something. You in Cali. <laughs> Where is you? I'm, I thought I'm, you was gone. On my, on my way. Got to get my money first. I got some money coming in my account. That's it. I'm getting ready to take <laughs> my money. Then I'm going. Got you. Got you. All right. I hit you. I understand. All right. She waiting on them billions of dollars to hit her account. You know. Yes, Justin said. All right, Liddell. Do you have property list to email you? Uh, how are you asking that? Like, do I have a property list or do you want to get on? Oh, the, Maurice, uh, can you send huh? him? Can you give with him? Justin wants to know if you have a property list. Sure, I can direct yeah, you. You can where, where, where? send them where? if they want to join. i tell you what, okay. put your email out there. And, and you know what? Put your email out there publicly and put it in chat because this is going to be played on podcasts and stuff too. You might as well have the whole world emailing you. So y'all email Maurice. <laughs> Maurice. I don't want no part of it. Mohammed.com. So M-A-U-R-I-C-E. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, Maurice at MauriceMohammed.com. Now there's a couple of different ways to spell Mohammed. So how, how oh, yeah. you... oh, that's right. M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D. Yeah, M-A-U-R-I-C-E at M-A-U-R-I-C-E M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D dot com So M-A-U-R I'm going to type it in the chat right now too There it is, his first name at firstandlastname dot com There you go ladies and gentlemen Perfect, perfect Y'all email him, 
Use the subject title property list. There you go. Make it easier for him. <laughs> subject title Put property state. list. Put your state too. Uh, yeah. And your state. Yeah, that yeah. that's probably going to be important since America has sovereign states. That's probably going to be important. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, then there we go. Look at that. Free leads. Boy, I'll tell you, that's what, that's what happens when you get with Antonio T. Smith Jr. Because yes, I don't want none of them. That mm-hmm. ain't, I don't want none mm-hmm. of them. I got, I got different kind of leads. I just want luxury apartments. You understand? I want one building. 450 <laughs> units. <laughs> and, then, and then ultimately, I want to be buying downtown buildings and stuff, too. I'm actually, Anyway, let me not put the information out there just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And we do appreciate you. Email maurice at mauricemohammed.com for you to be able to join a list and you'll get emails constantly. you get emails constantly and join a list. And, there's, and then actually, and then let him start mentoring you and maybe you all can get connected. Or maybe you can be a, what you call a watchdog? Maybe you could be someone, I forget what you call it, but someone that finds a property for him. And if he oh, closes, yeah. maybe, you can, maybe you can get a few thousand dollars Find for find us and surely ain't nobody here got a problem with a few thousand dollars even a few hundred dollars that's right yeah yeah a few hundred dollars for for using your thumbs i'll take that every day all day (laughs) all day all right ladies and gentlemen thank you very much i have a radio show here in the next 24 minutes but we are so grateful for you Adonia, your necklace is always on point as always (laughs) coach we'll talk to you the next time you talk to diana Alicia, appreciate you. All of you, thank you for crying off your lashes in the last yeah. segment. We are so grateful for all of you. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can't play it better. You can dominate. Love you more, Phil. See you later for all the other stuff later today. All right, everybody. Our next guest is the CEO of a Facebook competitor. It is called MeWe. It is a next-gen social platform with a focus on privacy. The company has surpassed 5.5 million members. CEO Mark Weinstein with us now in a Fox Business exclusive. Welcome to the program, Mark. Glad to have you with us. So why the focus on privacy? You are taking advantage of Facebook's public stumbles? Well, Deirdre, I'm one of the guys who invented social networks, and it was never, social networks were never invented to be what we call now surveillance capitalism, which is what Facebook is. Their members are not customers to serve, their data to sell and data to target. So it really, MeWe is a full, fully, you know, fledged uh, social network with all the features people love. The privacy is a pr- our privacy bill of rights. We don't sell your data. We don't target you. We don't mess up your news feeds. We have a freemium business model, so everything you love is free. And you can, you know, traditional capitalism, great capitalism. You can spend money on in-app purchases, or you can just enjoy the free service. There's nothing, you know, you can't be targeted for your vote or your opinion. Um, it's social media the way it was meant to be. So then, Mark, honestly, how do you make money? Because we all know when we use Facebook, it's free for the user, but we know because we are not paying that we become the product. So that Facebook is gathering data on us, and I think some people even say Facebook isn't a social company, it's a data company. But then how do you make money? Are people paying your company for subscriptions? No, no, it's very important. MeWe is free forever. But now we know that the freemium model works, and MeWe, is, we're doing great with revenue. We have 2,800 free emojis, but we've got great custom emojis, custom stickers. So live people voice, pay live you for those. A pay option. Right, and, and live voice, live video, secret encrypted chat. Uh, MeWe pages are $1.99 a month, but you reach 100% of your followers all the time. So for $24 a month, you don't have to boost anything. So if you have 500,000 followers or 5,000 followers or 10 million followers, you reach everybody. At Facebook, you reach 5%. Then you got to pay to boost, and then their algorithm messes the whole thing up anyhow. So MeWe is really true, pure social media. It's social networking done right, and people love it. Yeah, we're growing 
organically with no ads and, and, and we're not even marketing MeWe and we're growing by tens of thousands of people every day. So Mark, we have some stats about your company as you're speaking, five and a half million users right now, which is impressive. But how are you going to keep growing that? Because one telephone is not so fun, two telephones work. Basically, you need more people to sign up. Well, people are signing up, Deirdre, every day. And here's the beautiful thing about MeWe. So we also have some major, major deals that are not announced with some huge influencers worldwide. But even without them, we grew 405% last year. We're targeting, you know, we actually target, we'll have over 30 million members by the end of this year, over 150 million by the end of next year. We're growing twice as fast already this year. And people also move in groups. This is really, we have never seen something like this. So constituents move to people. So many people are censored or blocked or violated on Facebook and they all move to MeWe. So it, the growth is fantastic. Quick question, Mark. You say Facebook as an aside should not be broken up. Why is that? Listen, we compete with Facebook great. Snap competes with Facebook. Twitter competes with Facebook. Breaking up Facebook doesn't solve the problem that they are a surveillance company transacting data. By the way, also transacting data from non-members. They track all of us. Remember, the Cambridge Analytica CEO said they had data on 230 million adult, really every adult in America. Now, Facebook's new rules that you talked about today, that's a bunch of BS. Facebook has had rules the whole time. They break their rules all the time. That's the problem. The rules right. of Facebook mean nothing. Mark, we thank you very much for the time. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the growth. Thank you, Deirdre. I'm not sure if you already know this, but you're already absolutely perfect. You're already absolutely great. And you're already living in massive abundance. The most important things that you have is not what you have. It's not what you do. It's what you know. Because the people who do know what you need to know to leave the middle class, they're in the top 1%. And they control 96% of the world's income. 97% of this world is trading time for money. And that is not the way to become rich. It's not the way to become wealthy. And it is absolutely not the way to leave the middle class. There are 7.8 billion people in the world right now. And they all want to learn how to make money and how to leave the middle class. But the way to become a master at anything is to learn all the rules and then bend them to your favor. Right now in this world, there are 2,000 57 billionaires right now. So if you think becoming a billionaire is, a, is a possible, that's 2,057 people that have already proved that impossibility incorrect. And if you think that's crazy, there are 46.8 million millionaires in the world, worldwide right now. Now think about that. 46.8 million millionaires, and that number grows 1,730 millionaires every single day. Money is everywhere. You don't need to max out your credit cards. You don't need to borrow from granddad and grandma. Just look behind me. Look at all the wealth sitting behind me in this junkyard. It's insane how much money is everywhere, and you don't need to go out there and beg, bar, and steal to get it. You just need to know the rules of making money and how to leave the middle class. Essentially, all you need to know is the algorithm of making money, the rules of making money. All you need to know is what to do and how to do it, and you can leave the middle class. Any industry, yoga, golf, underwater basket weaving, clipping fingernails, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is know how to do it, how to get it done, and then find somebody to teach you how to do it, how to get it done, and you will be able to leave the middle class. If you're not getting my point, it's real simple. Whatever you have up here, as long as you understand the rules of leaving the middle class, as long as you understand how to get money, you can take what's up here and get wealthy for what you already have. Right now, the very thing you know up here is already being searched a thousand times a second on Google. Someone right now, actually 1,730 people right now, are gonna become a millionaire from the stuff that you have in your head. Why can't this be you? I mean, it's 1,730 people with your ideas that are no better than you, that are gonna leave the middle class, become a millionaire. Why are you not next? So how do we do this? How do we take what you know and apply it to objective money-making secrets and then allow you to leave the middle class? How do we take you from where you are and let you escape to where you wanna go? So how do we make 
all this money or take all this knowledge from the Warren Buffers, from Elon Musk, how do we take everything that everyone before you has done and how do we take all of that and then put it in your head so you can leave a legacy for your family? My name is Antonio T. Smith Jr. 32 years ago, I lived in a trash can. That's right, from six to 14, I had no running water, no electricity, no anything. And somehow I'm in the top 1% today. Not because I had the right background, not because I had a silver spoon in my mouth, simply because being homeless made me learn how to make money. I retired when I was 29 years old. I'm more than likely younger than you. I'm one of the top 1% income earners in one of the richest countries in the world. What I learned how to do when I was six years old was learn how to generate enough money to eat some cookies so I wouldn't die to death from starvation. From there, I learned how to go from cookies to a meal from a meal to clothes, to clothes, to shelter, to everything else that supplied my necessary needs. When I was six, I was forced to learn how to make money. And now that's what I'm gonna do and help you do. I've seen amazing results. I have my own economy. I've homeschooled my own children. And I wrote a book that teaches you every single thing that I know about making money, every single thing that other people know about making money, and most importantly, all the stuff that we don't tell you. Because the truth is, and you know it like I know it, the most honest, the most hardworking, unselfish people on planet Earth live in the middle class. Yet, your honesty, your unselfishness, your devout religion going self is not enough to get to the top 1% and that's not fair. The second half of my life has been not about how much money I make, but how I will be remembered from all the money that I have made. And I've been trying to teach everybody how to get out the middle class. I'm the crazy guy famous on the internet for trying to create 100,000 millionaires. I've created eight so far. I got a ninth one on the way, all the way from India. That's pretty cool. And what I want to tell you is something very simple. It's been hard. It's been absolutely hard to help people leave the middle class, not because of the people, because the system would rather keep you being someone else's money instead of you having your own economy and having the money come find and flow to you. It was frustrating because I knew that anybody can make money. And if you knew what I knew, you would change your life. Over the last few years, I built a large following of over half a million people every month that pay me to actually for me to give them advice. Well, that's been exciting for me. And the cool thing is I've created thousands of six figure earners. I've created millionaires. I've created people who can live their dreams and hold on to their legacies. And now my eyes are on you to create you to what you need to be great. I have been teaching my principles and these principles to hundreds of thousands of people around the world, every country, all continents and anyone who has taken them seriously, written them down and applied them, have a 100% success rate of leaving the middle class. I've taught these secrets to my following and my inner network, and I've watched them go from four figures to five figures, five figures to six figures, seven figures all the way to eight. Everything that I've ever learned, everything I've ever learned from millionaire mentors, billionaire mentors, and everything I learned from being homeless, and everything that got me into the top 1%, I have placed inside of a book. To date, it is the longest book that I've ever written, the most best book that I've ever written, and that book is called The Richest Man in the Trash Can, and I'm offering it to you today for free. This book is gonna show you how to become wealthy into the top 1% and leave the middle class. This book is gonna give you a step-by-step -step plan if you're 30 years old, all the way to 70 years old, how to get into the top 1%. If you're a teenager, how to get to the top 1%. If you're a millennial, how to get to the top 1%. It's gonna teach you how to make six figures immediately, teach you how to get to a million dollars immediately, and all that good stuff. Plus, I'm gonna give you the 36 objective laws of leaving the middle class. Plus, I'm gonna give you every last one of my secrets that have made me rich. You have to understand that leaving the middle class is the most important fight that you're gonna have in your life. And to be honest with you, it, you can kind of relate to this. It almost takes $450,000 a year just to be broke in America. And that's just in America. If you don't leave the middle class, which is actually an illusion, then you are gonna have a really hard time. 
think about it for a second. Some of, most of you are gonna be watching this are gonna be baby boomers and you've been sold a bad check. They lied to you. Your retirement was not enough for you to live comfortable and I'm gonna give you this book for free so you can figure out how to triple your retirement and then quadruple your retirement and then as Grant Cardone would say, 10 extra retirement so you can live the life that's worthy of you. I want you to remember that leaving the middle class is the most important battle that you could ever face in your entire life, especially for your family. So consider this video, this book, your friendly tap on the shoulder. I want to send you a free copy of this book because I believe that abundance is your birthright. I believe that abundance is freedom. And I believe that this book is right for you. In fact, I believe in that so much that I will send you the book for free. All you have to do is cover the cost of shipping. I'll eat the cost. I'll take the loss. And all you have to do is get the book and dominate your reality right now and apply the principles so you can be the best person for your life that is yours. Fill out the form sitting right there to the right. Go ahead, dominate your reality. I can't wait to send you my book. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to have you as someone that's been on the journey with me. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can plant better. You can dominate.